This is what we call smart power, using every possible tool and partner to advance peace and security, leaving no one on the sidelines, showing respect even for one's enemies, trying to understand and insofar as psychologically possible, empathize with their perspective and point of view. Hmm. Don't hate your enemies, empathize with them. That's the word from Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State and the presidential hopeful, taking a lot of heat for those comments. She made them at Georgetown this week. Clinton is considered to be the Democratic frontrunner for 2016, prohibitive, according to many. Are her chances diminishing in the wake of these comments? Joining us now, conservative columnist and author Ann Coulter. Ann, thanks for joining us this morning. How much do you respect and empathize with ISIS? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent way of putting it. No, I, I liked your comments. I think it's a good start. And maybe we could now get her to empathize with her enemies, the American middle class. <laughs> We'll start with ISIS and move into the poor middle class and, and working class Americans who can't get jobs thanks to democratic policies. They have no sympathy for the American middle class. It's, this is the kind of comment that I think a, a well-paid flack could explain. You know, explain well, away. But you have to constantly explain this one. Well, that's statement. the thing. That's, exa <laughs> that's exactly my point. Would her husband have ever said something like no, this? No, no. She's getting to be like Joe Biden with these comments. And, and uh, then she did the one, the follow-up on Obama's, you didn't build it. What did she say? Um, something along those lines. No corporation. Right. And she knows because she was poor. This is yeah. someone who hasn't driven a car and made her own <laughs> breakfast in 30 years. Um, but she was desperately poor there, uh, trying to make the note on two multi-million dollar houses. So, um, what does this bode for her presidential campaign, which we all assume is about to kick off earlier in the I year? I do not think that she is the automatic nominee, huh. um, which we're being told mostly by MSNBC, but their argument is we owe her. Well, no, we don't owe her. You're the ones who dumped her for trophy wife Obama. <laughs> what, the rest of America is supposed to feel guilty over that? Um, but that's really their only argument for her, but she isn't that, she isn't that likable. So if you compare her to someone like Elizabeth Warren, now a lot of conservatives dismiss Elizabeth Warren because they don't like her views, of course, uh, because they're pretty darn left wing. Right. But there's an internal coherence to Elizabeth Warren's worldview that I don't see from Hillary Clinton. Right, and if Elizabeth Warren meant what she said, which she doesn't, I'd agree with her. But, you know, the phony attacks on Wall Street, right. while she's elevating, you know, Barney Frank and Chris Dodd as the ones fighting Wall Street. No, no, no. They're Wall Street's butt boys. Maybe you haven't been paying attention, Elizabeth. Um, but I want a lot of Democrats to run. I want um, Let a Thousand Flowers Bloom. I want de Blasio and Jerry Brown. And Webb is apparently running Jim Webb. Um, for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. We need Elizabeth Warren. Whereas on the Republican side, for the first time ever, I would really like if we didn't have a bunch of crazy candidates. If you haven't been a governor or a senator, preferably a governor, please do not run for president as a Republican. We do not want Carly Fiorina. I love her, but no, she can't run. Same thing with Ben Carson, fantastic surgeon. I never wanted Ronald Reagan to be my surgeon. We can't have congressmen. No wasting time. It's down to Romney, Ted Cruz, Chris Christie, or Scott Walker. That's it, Republicans. It's going to be a long campaign season, and that's the reason I'm just so glad you're here. And I hope <laughs> that you will come back often. Ann Coulter, thanks a lot for joining Good us. Good to see you.